Right now, two major hearings on the criminal cases against former President Donald Trump. A federal judge in the January 6th case pouring cold water on proposed trial dates from both sides. That just happening. Meanwhile, in Georgia, DA Fannie Willis is expected to unveil new details on her case against the former president in response to a motion by former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. Brett Tolman is a former U.S. attorney and former counsel for the Senate Judiciary Committee and joins us now. And Brett, we're at the point where there's so much to keep track of. Dana and I keep chatting this morning. That take everybody through what's happening here. Obviously, we just got this news on the judge putting a kibosh on the request for these dates. What's happening? Yeah, you know, this may be just as simple as uh, schedules and and how do you handle how do you handle you know difficult complex cases uh, on a on a judge's docket and and so we'll. We'll see. You know, both sides not getting their way is probably going to happen quite a bit uh, on these procedural matters as a judge tries to navigate these in, as impartially as possible. Very interesting. Um, can I get your reaction to a, a few other things that we're learning here? Um, this number stands out, 12.8 million. That is the number of discovery material pages in the D.C. Trump case, 12.8 million pages, okay? And if it makes you feel any better, the key documents are approximately 47,000 pages. Transcripts of witnesses, it is a roadmap to the case. What is your reaction to that? And what do you do with that? <laughs> you, t you spend a lot of time reviewing documents and you ask for, you know, it, look, a defendant in a criminal case is supposed to be tried within 70 days. On, on these complex white collar cases, it is not uncommon for it to take years. I have one case that is in, it's, it's a criminal, very complex criminal fraud case that is in its ninth year. So depending on, on the resources, depending on how large and, and substantial the evidence is, it, it can take years, Sandra. I mean, that's, that, that in itself is news. Um, let's play this sound out of Victor Shokin. This was obviously a huge interview uh, over the weekend with Brian Kilmeade on his Saturday show, uh, where Shokin said he believed that the Bidens did indeed get bribes. Listen. We, we have I do not want to deal in unproven facts, but my firm personal conviction is that, yes, this was the case. They were being bribed. The fact that Joe Biden gave away $1 billion in uh, U.S. Uh, money in exchange for my dismissal, my firing, isn't that alone a case of corruption? So he has very clearly publicly come out swinging against Hunter and Joe Biden. Where does that take all of this, Brett? It's very powerful testimony when you have someone on the inside who is credible, who's also reluctantly acknowledging that um, what they believe the payments to, to, to be utilized for were, were actually corrupt and and that you know it's I, I think about this Sandra I think about the RICO cases that I've brought in my career and ironically you see what's happening in Georgia but RICO would be one of the first statutes that we would be analyzing the the conspiracy among the Bidens if in fact this this is their scheme that they would utilize access to Joe Biden that Hunter Biden and his colleagues in the businesses would, you know, ingratiate themselves to leaders of other other countries, demand money, use that money to pay Joe Biden and others in the family. That's classic conspiracy to commit fraud and corruption that is the heart of many RICO cases that we've brought. And ironically, nobody seems to be analyzing that. As, as the case in DOJ. Really interesting analysis on that. Brett Tolman, thank you so much for taking us through it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.